Why is this my background? Jesus. Hey, y'all. I was having a whole meltdown because something just literally occurred right now, of course, as I'm about to go live. But this could have been nobody but not be so, and I'm going to throw some type of way. Because why is my background looking like this? Thank you, Jesus. Now, um, tell some people we are on the link to our YouTube. You can invite people. This is a public uh, Bible study. So excuse me if I'm going to be looking several places. I'm on four different devices. I'm right here on TikTok. I'm right here on IG. I'm right here to those who are in the resource house. Um, and I'm right here on live streaming to YouTube. Y'all, um, I'm not going to keep y'all long for tonight for Bible study. It's going to be 40 minutes to an hour tops. Welcome to Speedboat Bible Study. Usually I do not stream this on TikTok ever, 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 ever. But I also think this might be my TikTok for the week instead of on Sunday. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe to make up for a Sunday when I can't come, which it will be on the 26th. So we're going to do a Speedboat Bible Study. I have never been a part of our Speedboat Bible Study. This is for our ships that don't sink resource house. It's what we usually do. Um, so... Nah, you need to not be on IG. You belong on TikTok and YouTube. So, baby girl, I need you to get down with the dip set and get in position, please. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Um, so, welcome to Speedboat Bible Study. We are going to be talking about now faith on tonight. Y'all, I'm kind of like, all day I feel like the enemy has been fighting me to get this word out, like, uh, he's been playing on my emotions on all, all day. Um, I had to go ahead and uh, and make sure you tell some people in the resource house not that we are live. Like um, I'm appalled at them. Shame. <laughs> Even though the Lord will roll the shame away. Um, I'm going to say uh, all day the enemy has been fighting me about releasing this word. And of course, because I felt fine. And y'all know I've, I've been doing other teachings and other studies. And um, and so this one, which is called Now Faith, that he is fighting me on, is of course for him to get me to lose my faith. He tried me even all the way up into me being in quiet time, even up until this very moment right now. Um, because this... This little device that I have right here, it's my stand where I use this as a creative director. I use this a lot for behind the scenes. I don't really use this to record myself, but um, I use this to catch a lot of behind the scenes things. And this part right here on this on, on my little uh, tripod just broke just now. I had this for over, I had this since 2018. And I just dropped this, and this part right here just broke as I was setting up my camera, like down to the last thing. And it kind of almost thwarted my mood in this time when I have to have now faith. And I'm like, God, I don't have enough devices. I don't have enough. I think I, I overextended myself to come on and even try and teach this word. I think I've done too much because I feel like I can't do it. I don't have enough devices. I just broke my thing for my tripod. And I was really over here like, you know, about to have a whole conniption. But I had to realize again that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Why? Because the weapons that are formed against us is not carnal. And the fact that today word is called Now Faith, our speedboat Bible study, the enemy wants to fight me on getting this word out. He wants to fight me so hard, but we're going to have this word on tonight because the Lord has sent me to complete an assignment and I am going to complete this assignment. So we're going to get into this Bible study. The Bible study starts 40 minutes an hour once I start teaching. So we don't start once I come on here. Also, again, um, this replay will only be available on ships that don't sink YouTube. The replay is only available on ships that don't sync YouTube. So yeah, I'm live here on IG, I'm live on TikTok, I'm live on YouTube, and I have my resource house members to my left. And so I'm looking at four different devices. So forgive me if I'm not looking directly at one particular place, but let me tell y'all, this replay will only be on ships that don't sync YouTube. So you need to go there and you need to make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications so you can watch this because it's a really, really good word on tonight which this is really, really interesting as I, as, as now that I'm about to 
Hmm. Because I need to do, I need to do this. I need my notes. I need to follow my notes. So again, welcome. On today, I'm going to ask you guys to sow a seed into this word. Sow a faith seed. The cash app should be right here in our on my TikTok. So if it's not there, I need my moderator to get it there, please. Um, in the name of Jesus, right? I'm going to need you to get it there. I'm going to put these notes up so I can uh, share my screen with those who are... Oh, I forgot. I can't do that one here. Hmm. Okay. Um, can y'all still hear me on Zoom? Am I am I audible? Because I'm gonna be going back and forth, and I kind of want to switch between my notes. Today we're coming from Hebrews chapter eleven and one. I'm also gonna hit a couple of other scriptures. You guys are gonna have notes. Um, I'm trying to do this. I'm so sad that I broke my tripod right before I got on. Y'all have no idea. Like, I'm upset about this. Now, faith seed. I'm going to tell you now to sow a nine, now faith seed. What the Lord had told me is about this sowing is, he said, tell them to sow a faith seed according to their capacity, your measure, you can. There's no number on it. He's just talking about your capacity. Why? Because as I'm going to prayer, you're going to hear why. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you on tonight, oh, Father God, to just equip us with sound hearing, oh, Father God, and eyes that can see, oh, Oh, Father God, and ears that can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to his church, is saying to his body in regards to this, uh, this word, oh, Father. We just thank you right now that you have just equipped me, oh, Father God, and just given me the 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 encouragement to come forward oh father god and just giving me oh father god the ability to be able to give and uh teach this word oh father i thank you right now oh father god that this word will be a seed that is sown on the on the hearts of those oh father god who uh is good ground oh father god and the measure that they believe oh father god 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 100 times that that they believe i pray that it will be a bountiful heart harvest for them in the mighty name of Jesus, oh Father. I come against every distraction. I come against every monitoring spirit, every mimicking and mocking spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against every uh, technical difficulty, oh Father God. I come to uh, declare and decree, oh Father God, to rebuke the plans of the enemy. I send the confusion back into his camp in the name of Jesus, oh Father God. I come right now, oh Father God, to just uh, uh, thwart the plan of the enemy, oh Father. We rebuke and we bind his hands and his nymphs, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus. I just thank you right now, oh Father, that how you will cover this live and cover this live stream and cover this teaching and those under the sound of this teaching in the blood of Jesus. Let there be a hedge of protection around this teaching on tonight, oh Father God. Let every arrow and weapon that is formed try to come up against anything that is happening here, oh Father God, because we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And today I am teaching as you have led me to teach about now faith, oh Father. And we know that we need to hear this word, oh Father. I pray that this will be an echo chamber just even around us right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that we can only hear the word of God. We can only hear the word of faith oh father god we will not get distracted in the comments by those oh father who is uh sent here to be a distraction we will not oh father god i ask that you bind their tongues you bind their little twitter fingers oh father god that you get them cramped up shut down their wi-fi in the name of jesus oh father let their phone overheat in the name of jesus so we can stay focused oh god we can thwart the plans of the enemies we shall not oh father be moved but we shall stay steadfast until this word is completed in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask right now, just even now, that you start to bless every person that will sow a seed of faith right now in the name of Jesus, oh Father God. Let them sow it to the capacity and measure that they have that you put on their heart, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. And I ask that it comes back to them a hundredfold instantly that they won't even wait oh father they won't even have to wait for this uh this seed to come back and turn around oh god meet the needs of everyone oh father god of whatever they're having faith in you for for that word that you have spoken over them in the name of jesus i pray oh god i ask holy spirit that you decrease me but not only decrease me decrease me but decrease those who are under the sound of this teaching so we can get in all our getting understanding oh father god let there be understanding as we gather here oh god we are not here 
for entertainment. We are here to hear the word of God and to understand and to comprehend in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. I lose concentration. Let me just lose some things now that I bind it. I lose concentration. I uh, I lose uh, clarity. I lose diligence. I lose sound minds. I lose good hearing, oh Father God. I lose good hearts, oh Father God. I lose right now the dirt, any part in place that was over that heart. I loosen that dirt so this seed, this word can get planted, oh Father God, and take root. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Okay. Again, what's up? My name is Nina. On TikTok, y'all kind of already know me. On YouTube, we thank you for you following us. Please hit the like uh, button, hit the subscribe button, and please share this. So this word, this word is a seed into somebody's life. So this seed into them, right? And tell them to come on, come on in the room and to hear the word of God. Amen. Um, because we are teaching and talking about now faith in this very hour. And the way I was fought on even delivering this word today is just ridiculous. Because it was like, I haven't been like, I ain't tussle in a minute like this. I mean, I, I experienced a warfare, but this was like... The, and, and the only way the, the, the enemy can fight you on this is if he gets you in your feelings to make you think that you are not who God tells you you are and that he can get you. Picture you going to teach about faith and then he trying to get you in doubt. How that work? That's how you got to learn to recognize when the weapon is being formed. And we fall into the trap and snare of the enemy each and every time. But we will not do it today. Amen. And we're going to. And we're going to go forth. I'm going to go forth. Again, you can sow a seed of faith seed into this word. If it touch you, if you touch and agree in any part of this word to your measure, there's no number on it. The cash app is in our comments. We are an online ministry of ships that don't sink. We are opening our resource house on August 30th, the last Wednesday, I believe, of this month to uh, other vessels. We're opening up the resource house for memberships where you can come in and we're going to actually kick it off with a four week Bible study. OK, this people Bible study, we do this once or twice a month uh, publicly since the Lord had told me, I think, back in March. April, um, and this was the first kind of Bible studies that I have done publicly only this year since I've been in ministry for the last two and a half years, I believe. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. We thank you. We appreciate you. Now, those on Zoom, amen. Um, oh, sorry. Um, those on Zoom, y'all have to excuse me. I can't see y'all, so I'm going to need my resource house members to either get on sooner or you're going to have to wait a little bit. Because I have to look at my notes. I'm only working from four devices. And I know that sounds crazy, right? You only got four. So I need to look at my notes. So, um, yeah, I can't really see y'all. I'm sorry in the Zoom. I can't see y'all the way I want to see y'all because I'm not streaming it straight from here to the YouTube. Which I probably could have done. But, again, I just broke one of my tripods, y'all. So, bear with me. Okay, so if y'all got anything to say in the Zoom, if anybody's coming in the Zoom, Nye, I'm going to need you to put in the comment section that somebody is in the waiting room. So anybody that's in the resource house, if you get kicked out or you're in the waiting room, please tell Nafisa and Nafisa will tell me and I will go back in and I will look and I will let you in. But outside of that, I can't see y'all because the way I'm streaming right now. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, and I want to read Hebrews, and really I want to look at uh, several translations, which is the AMP, the Passion, and the Message Translation. This is how I kind of want to, uh, how I kind of want to, how I kind of want to do this, okay? Just, and I'm going to look at the KJV. So we're just going to read it from several different perspective translations because I want y'all to have a clear understanding of this word so let's start in the AMP shall we I feel like I should have just streamed from zoom to the YouTube because it would have been better for me especially my poor my poor tripod okay AMP version says this in Hebrews 11 1 to 3 it says now faith is the assurance the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. For this kind of faith, 
the men of old gained divine approval by faith, that is, with an inheritance trust and enduring confidence in the power wisdom and goodness of god we understand that the world's universe ages were framed and created formed and put in order and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of god so that it is seen not as it is sorry so it is seen what, so what is seen was not made out of things which were which are visible, okay? That's the the amplified translation. But let's look at the the passion translation of that, okay? Let's look at the passion. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read of all the translations because I'm gonna go back and forth. Um, and it's very important that you allow me to read this because we're gonna we're gonna comprehend this. The power, it says in the Passion Translation, of bold faith. It says, now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Your faith is all that is required to prove what is still unseen. This testimony of faith is what previous generations were commended for. Faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's words. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, well, I ain't done, I ain't done. What else I said? Oh, I got, I got the message translation for you. The message translation says this. Faith in what we don't see. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what is what distinguished, separated our ancestors, set them above the crowd by faith. We see the world called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we don't see. So what we see that is created was created by what we don't see, right? Here's the New King James translation. I'm reading all of them because I, I, I don't know which one you're going to comprehend and grasp, but I need us to understand. It says in the New King James, the title says, by faith we understand. Now faith, I love how all of them say, uh, except for the message. So here we go. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the thing which are which the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. So everything that we see here in the earth was made from what was not seen, was made by a word. It's called the bar, by the word of God, the bar, like whoever here abracadabra, the bar. You get what I'm saying? And so this is where we're going to pick up at. And I had to read all of them. Okay, maybe I need to read the King James translation because some of you might like that. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. My thing here today and what I've been commissioned to do by the Lord is to tell us about now faith. Okay, we going to get into this thing. Get ready to take some notes. My mother is putting them in the, in the chat on YouTube and on TikTok. I appreciate her. So, you know, um, she helps out. She's, she's my handy dandy notebook. You get what I'm saying? Like, she, she's going to help us this out right quick. So, let, let, let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk about now faith. First of all, I want to give you the de definition of faith. And the prophetic diction, uh, uh, definition of faith is faith is the immaterial mechanism. Let's stop right there. Faith is the immaterial mechanism. It's, 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 it's immaterial. You can't see it. 
you're kind, okay? Just like the immaterial, immaterial, immaterial world. You can't see the invisible world, but the invisible realm is more realer than this realm. So the word that God spoke to you holds more weight. But even though you can't see it, because the word of God holds so much weight, it created everything that you do now see. That's how heavyweight the word is. This is why you can't take prophetic words for lightly or anything like this. Cool, 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 right? It says faith is the immaterial mechanism. So your faith is an immaterial mechanism that produces material blessings and provision from creator God. Your faith. Your faith is the immaterial mechanism that produces material blessings. So it's something that's not materialized, but it will produce the material thing and provision from creator God. This is why. But your faith in what? Your faith in the word of God. Your faith in what God says he going to do the, your faith in his word. That's power right there. That's his covenant. God's word is his covenant. Amen. Okay. Now that we know what faith means, let's look at what now means because the Lord is telling me to tell us we need now faith. So the faith seed that you're sowing is this now seed is what you're sowing, right? So you can sow a now seed and, and guarantee that this seed will come right back to you. Here's the, here, here, here's the word now according to Oxford Dictionary. The word now means at the present time or moment. The Lord needs you to have faith now. No, 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 no. I don't think y'all hear me. The Lord needs you to have faith now. Why does he need you to have faith now? Because if you wait till the thing comes and now you're excited and you believe God when the things come, that ain't faith. He said, have it now. Now. Not be so you you ahead of yourself, baby girl. You're way ahead of yourself dropping notes. You're too far. I'm giving definitions. Keep up with the notes, child of God. Keep up with my notes because I'm not even there yet. Mm-mm. Nafisa is really good. She just gets excited, y'all. She thought I meant now. But the way that Nafisa wrote that thing now, like she know I'm going to say it because I am, because I have given her my notes that she's supposed to put in the chat. So she wrote it now, even though I told her to wait. That's how some of y'all be. Y'all be trying to go ahead, God. But she, she, she's doing what she's supposed to be doing. She, she's still my handy dandy notebook, right? But we're just defining the word now. Now faith. I said now. I ain't saying no, Nafisa. Love you, girl, but you slow down. Slow down, popcorn, right? It says this, now faith. So now means at the present time or moment. It means at present. So do you presently have the faith that the Lord told you about the word he spoke to you? Do you have that faith? Now faith. Now. Like, you need to be excited about it now. Oh, that's not even it to just be excited about it. Now faith means right now. It also means currently. It means here and now. It means in this day and age, meaning in the day right now when you're not married, do you believe that you're a wife or that you're a husband? In this day and age right now where your bank account might be looking like it's negative, do you believe that you're going to be a millionaire? I'm talking about now. I'm talking about now. Now. Oh, now, that house that you've been looking for and you've been tired of you and your kids living in this one bedroom apartment or that room and the Lord showed you already and spoke to you that you're going to have a five bedroom house, three and a half baths with a sun porch. And he said, you're going to have it now, here and now, even though you're looking around and you're like, this apartment is so ghetto. The paint is chipping, Lord, but I thank you now. Oh, okay. I don't know who business I'm in, but I'm in my own business, right? It says, now also is used, especially in, in conversation, to draw attention to a particular statement at a point, a statement, a particular statement or point in a narrative. The narrative is to have now faith, because now faith is the substance. Th th that's the narrative. What's the narrative, Nina? To have now faith. What else is the narrative, Nina? Um, now faith brings our hopes into reality. It all says now. Oh, man. Okay. 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 No, 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 no. Okay, we're going to go. It says, now faith is the assurance. Now God needs you to be assured. Why? Why? Because now faith is Noah faith. This is the point not piece of rope for y'all. Now faith is Noah faith. The Lord has been speaking to me all year. This is a point. Y'all can write this down. Where the, where the Lord says, we need Noah faith. 
He told me when I prophesied the prophetic word of the year, he said that Hebrews 11, the whole chapter, top to bottom, is our scripture for the year. The Lord's been telling me he's instilling faith in us. It's an installation. This is a now faith. So now faith equal no faith. What we need to have in this very moment, in this present moment, every day, every day you need to wake up and ask Holy Spirit to renew your now faith. Because you, you might have faith all day today. Then you go to sleep and in the morning the enemy is just hitting you, boom, doubt, boom. Thoughts that exalt itself against God, boom, hitting you. Your bank account again, boom, hitting you. Another charge just came out and made you more than negative, boom, hitting you. You just got denied for that apartment, boom, hitting you. You said, God, I need you to restore my now faith. I need to have the faith now in this present time. I need you to restore it now. Because it's assurance. It's the immaterial mechanism. It's an immaterial mechanism now, Faith. Oh, now, Fisa, you got so down. This girl, she be trying to be on fire. Slow it down. Slow it down. Slow it down, right? Amen? Now, Faith. The next point is Noah moved on the word before he can even grasp fully what the urgency of the word required of him. Noah moved. This is why now, Faith, is also Noah Faith. Because Mo Noah moved on the word. <laughs> Noah moved on the word that God gave him. He moved. Okay, 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 okay. Because see, faith is an action word. And here's why I got to tell you this. Because faith is an action word. Because I know we think faith is getting excited about something. It's not just the excitement. The faith is you moving on the word. You need to have Noah faith. Oh. Oh, God, help me. Okay, okay, why? Because let me, let me go to the King James, uh, 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 let me go to the Blue Letter Bible, right? And when I hit now faith, when I hit the word now and I look it up, it says to but and moreover, right? It means even so, nevertheless. Now in the King James, uh, in the Blue Letter Bible, it means nevertheless. Like, my bank account is... Negative, but nevertheless, I'm going to still go ahead and invest in this business. Nevertheless, you get what I'm saying? I know y'all all love this little meme that y'all do on TikTok and everything. Y'all got two cents in your bank account, but nevertheless, I'm going to look at houses on, on Zillow or Willow or whatever it's called. Y'all be up there. Everybody be using the sound. Nevertheless. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. I hope I hope y'all feeling me. If I'm shuffling around y'all in the Zoom, I'm sorry. But but, but come on. I'm, I'm, I'm about to get in all of our business. I'm not about to get in somebody's business. I'm about to get in my business too. Because I'm here to talk about me and my now faith. Because I need this. This is only part one, right? Here we go. Here we go. It says, no one moved on the word. Well, let's look at faith in the, in the, in the Blue Letter Bible and what that means in a strong accordance. Let's look at the word faith because I gave you the prophetic uh, definition of it, which is the same, none in the same. The word faith means this. It's conviction of the truth of anything. Conviction of the truth of anything. It's belief. It's, it's in, the, the, in the New Testament of a conviction or belief. It's respecting man's relationship to God. This, this thing is late, right? It's the conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ, right? Uh, faith is also a strong and welcome conviction of belief that Jesus is the Messiah through whom we obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of God, right? It's a belief with the predominant idea of trust or confidence. Now faith, as it says in the Amplified Version, is the assurance. You have confidence, right? That's what it's telling me. It's, it, I mean, that's what, that's when I read it, that's what it says. It says, now faith is the assurance. It's so much assured, it's a deed. Oh, God. If you got a deed to the house, that means it's yours. Say that about, oh, shit, hey. Oh, faith, your faith is a title deed. Oh, God. God, tell, help me, Holy Spirit. It means you hold the thing already because of your faith. You have the title. When you have a title to a car and you go and sell your car, you got to give up the title because that means you no longer have ownership. And the person who has the title owns it. Your faith says you own what the Lord had already told you. Is this good? Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm not saying like you're going to own your wife. I'm not saying 
saying you're gonna own your husband. What I am saying is you're gonna already be, you are already owning the mantle, owning the mantle of husband or wife. You're already owning the house that the Lord says you have. That's why you can go on Zillow and say, nevertheless, my bank account is in a negative 50. $50, but here I am. My bills is past due, but I'm looking at my looking at my houses on Zillow for a million dollars. Why? Because the Lord says you will have a million dollar home. You can have an estate. Why? Your, your, God said, his word says that you should be the head and not the tail. You will be the lender and not the borrower. That means you want to be a faithful steward. We better get right. You have the title, you have the assurance. It says you have come, your faith says you have confirmation. How many of you ever go to pay something and ever go to pay something, may it be, mm, I don't know, y'all love Amazon, right? You ever go pay a bill and you look for the confirmation to say that it's already paid for. You look for the email to say confirmed. Your payment has been confirmed. Your faith makes it confirmed. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Now, Fisa, you're not blocking people fast enough, baby girl. I need you to move faster. Mute them. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. Amen. Okay. It says also, now faith is the assurance title be the confirmation of things hoped for divinely guaranteed. This guaranteed is from God. It's divinely guaranteed. So it's not going to come in the way that you think. It's going to come in unusual circumstances. I put out an email the other day that's called Supernatural Acquisition, Supernatural Push. Come on now. Come on now. Listen, on TikTok, we're not taking no disrespect. Nafisa, I love you on uh, YouTube, but they can always go back and they can get the notes themselves. I love that there's people there and also, but make sure you, you, you chin check. You at the door on TikTok because we ain't got time for this. Cause like my now faith says my my ment my mentor uh, my mentee slash my uh, moderator is gonna get you out of here now. I, I she owns that like she has the power and authority to do that. Come on now, I'm not playing with y'all. We we not doing this, right? It also tells me now faith is the assurance title deed confirmation of things hoped for. What are you hoping for? Your hope, whatever you're hoping for, is gonna is already divinely guaranteed. Do you know that Jesus made us a guarantee? You are the bride of Christ. You already engaged. You have an inheritance, sweetheart. Right? It's the conviction of their reality. You need to be so honed in on the word of God with so much conviction that it's already a reality. I'm already looking at wedding dresses. I already know what everybody in my wedding gonna wear. I already know the colors. I just, I'm waiting. I just gotta figure out who's my officiator. I already know what kind of cake I want. I already have my husband's suit. I already know about his groomsmen. I'm already planning it. I know whether if it's gonna be a big wedding or a small wedding. I, like, dude, I'm convicted. I'm convinced that the Lord said what he said and it's gonna come to pass. I'm convinced that ships that don't sink resource house is gonna be a resource that I'm praying and asking. God to for, for, for us to do back to school drives for cities not one not one city not one state for cities that we'll be able to get a van and drive the country and tour the country just to feed his people that's how convinced I am I'm asking for it start asking for it I'm learning some of you don't even know how to write a million dollar check y'all need to practice practice your signature you should be so convicted what colors do you want your house? What color do you want that nursery woman of God that you think you're going to be bearing and you and your husband ain't going to have that baby? Who said it? The devil is a lie. We serve a God who opened bearing wounds. It's Sarabo Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Now, faith. Here's the next point. Right? It says this. Oh, I got it. Oh, okay. It says your faith your belief should get you to move. It should convict you. Your faith should be so convicting that it should get you to move. Faith is an action word. It should The conviction of the word should stir you and move you. It shouldn't just get you excited today because, yes, I heard a good word and then you move along. Like, you, the next, like, today you're excited and then tomorrow is just like, oh, well. Faith is not motivation. 
faith is even when you lack motivation, you're still moving on that thing. Even when it's hard, you're still moving on that thing. Be my slice of cake. You know I got you, bro. You know I got you. Adrian, I got you. Faith is still you moving on the thing. Faith is still you looking for houses that are for sale. You move on it. It's not motivation. You ain't going to feel motivated every day. But and it, it, it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter. Oh, I don't feel motivated. Good. You're going to be stagnant. But do you have faith? Because if somebody come and tell me they don't feel motivated, I'm going to ask, do you have faith? Because faith is an action word. Okay. It says right here. Um, it says, by faith, we see the world called into existence. To be called into something means you're moving, right? That's what it means. It means to be called into something. Um, it says this, by faith, that is with inherited trust and enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God. If you know that God is good and the promises of God is yes and amen, we understand that the worlds were framed and created. It was action. So for something to be created and formed, that was an action. Oh my gosh. Lord God, I just thank you. I, I thank you, oh God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that, that, that we're, we're just getting this word, right? We're just getting this word. It tells us right here. Oh, did, did I read that right? Um, it says, now faith brings our hopes into reality. It brings it. That means the, the, the it, it moves the word. It moves what the Lord had already spoke to you. It has power behind it. Amen. So now faith, your belief, your now faith, not just your whimsy faith, your faith that goes and comes, not your faith that's here for an hour. No, your now faith. It needs to be present all day. It should get you to move. The conviction of the, of the word should stir you and move you. Why? Because faith in the blue letter Bible said it's the conviction. It's, it, it's the conviction of belief. That's what it says. It's the conviction of truth, of anything. You should be so convicted and have so much confidence in the word of God that you just move. So here's a prayer for you. I got one. I got one. Oh, I don't even have to use this. I got one. So my, my thing to you would be to pray this. And, and I don't think I put this in one of my fire torch prayers, but I would say this. Here's a prayer that you can, you, you can actually mention. It says this. Move, oh God, because we said faith is an action word. You need to move, right? Move, oh God, to keep us immovable. Oh, shit, if I said that. You need God to move so you can remain immovable on his word. You won't move out of your now faith. Oh, you'll stay steadfast. Move, oh God, to keep us immovable. Let your word go forth, move forth, to move things out the way so the word spoken over my life remains immovable. Move that doubt out the way. Move those haters that's just talking in my ear telling me it's impossible out the way. Move anything that is blocking. Move any hindrance. Move any hurdles. Move anything that's holding up what you have told me is already mine, mine out the way so that the word spoken over my life remains immovable. It is in Isaiah 55, 11 time. Well, what does Isaiah 55 and 11 says? It says, so the word spoken forth from my mouth shall not return unto me void, but it shall go out and accomplish in, in the thing for which I have sent it. It shall prosper in that thing. It's in Isaiah 55, 11 time. So God, the word that you've spoken to me cannot, cannot come back to you void. So if it came forth from your mouth, it, it's, the, it's the word that has power to call that thing that you've spoken to me into existence. Because God is the only one who could call those things that are not as if they were. The bar. Right? Because um, Myron Golden says it's like this. If I can, if we can call those things as they not as if they were, we would have been doing it all the time. Our job is to have now faith. Our job to, is to hold the title deed and never give it up to the enemy. We need to be holding that thing every day like this. This is my house. This is my house. Oh, this is why I'm having my wedding. This, oh, 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 this is the building I'm moving my business in. Oh, this is how big my warehouse going to be because I'm going to be shipping things out. This how, is this how many workers. You need to have the plan. You need to hold the title in a deed. This is the deed to that, to, that, to that car. It's not just material things. Oh, here's the check. Write a check. How about you write a check to your child's college fund and say, oh, this is how much I'm paying for my kid's college. What? It ain't going to just be for you. It could be for your family. Oh, this is how, I'm gonna, this how, this how much money I'm putting in my mother's bank account to retire her. Oh, this is the ranch that I'm, me and my family are going to have, and we're going to plant fruits and vegetables, and we're going to live off the land. 
This is my business. Come on, bro. This is my business. This is what it looks like. Oh, it's going to have three floors. Hold the title deed. Everybody so crochet. So you need to say, um, move in every place, Holy Spirit, that's like sitting water. Because Holy Spirit is living water. And Jesus says you should have rivers of living water flowing from your belly. If the river is flowing, it ain't sitting. Sitting water is stagnant, right? It's stinky. So it says, move in every place, Holy Spirit, that's like sitting water. Move it, living water. Move, living spirit, in every place that is dead or at a dead stop. Move in every place that is stagnant. Let your, let your word move this place, Lord. I just gave y'all a prayer. Let me say it in full so maybe you can hear it at one time. Because we're talking about now faith is an action word and it means move. It says this. Move, oh God, to keep us immovable. Let your word go forth, move forth, to move things out the way so the word spoken over my life remains immovable. It's, it is an Isaiah 55, 11 time. Move in every place, Holy Spirit, that's like sitting water. Move it, living water. Move living spirit in every place that is dead or at a dead stop. Move in every place that is stagnant. Let your word move this, Lord. Who word? The Lord word. I'm not praying my word. I'm praying the, the, the Lord's word. Let your word, Lord, move in this place. Now, Pisa, you can put that prayer in the chat if they feel like they need it because it's a great prayer to move things, right? Here's the next point, though. No one never experienced rain. So if now faith equals Noah faith, no one never experienced rain. And he was told to build the ark in the middle of a desert. I don't think y'all hear me. I've never seen healthy marriages in my family. I've never seen anyone make a million dollars. I don't know why Nina is using this voice because I don't know either. Uh, it just seems like it's so fitting right now, right? I've never seen anyone send all their kids to college. I've never seen anyone in my family live outside the projects. I've never, what have you never seen? Don't matter. Basically what I'm saying is don't even consider it. Remember, I, I, I did a, a stagger not at the promise on my TikTok live last Sunday, don't even consider it. it. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter what you never experienced. Noah never experienced rain. Because remember, my first point was Noah moved on the word before he can even grasp it fully. He still moved. So this point says Noah never experienced rain. What happened if the word that the Lord is speaking to you is something you never experienced? You always feel like you have to experience something for, in order for God to do it again. No, first of all, somebody already experienced it because nothing under the sun is new. Well, they shot out a whole shit head. And we are overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the, the lamb and the word of our testimony. So therefore, when we ask God to move, when we ask God to allow us to testify, when we tell, ask God to let his word testify for us, we're saying, God, do it again. But for me, it's time. Because like I told my cousin earlier, I said, if somebody next to me get blessed, guess what? I ain't mad. That means I'm next. Why am I next? Because that means I'm on the right block. That means the Lord is moving in this place. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to take a sip. I, I deserve a sip of shot too because I'm going to let that marinate. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Hallelujah. I'm next. Somebody just put I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. I'm on the right block. I'm next. I'm next. You talking about something. I see everybody around me getting blessed. Good. You on the right block. You on the right place. <laughs> you on the right place. Especially if they believe us. I'm in the right spot. This is it. This is it. I see other, everybody else praying and they getting blessed. I've been praying this for, oh, I'm in the right spot. Thank God is in this place. What you mad for? I'm next. I'm next. Because if the word came to pass that the Lord spoke over there, like what makes you think you, God is no respecter of person? That means you didn't have to go first for you to believe. You still need to, you need to, I'll be holding my deed tighter like every day. Like, okay, let me tell you, let, let, I'm glad I got this book. Let me tell you what now faith is. This is now faith. When I tell y'all to write a check to yourself, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. This is an old check, so y'all can look at it. Y'all can't get no routing numbers or anything, but this is an old check. Amen. Right, hold on. Let me let me do it like this. This is an old check, real quick. Right, this is it. This is when I first started my business, uh, Nina Fit Lifestyle. I got a, uh, I left my corporate America job in 2018. At the time, I wasn't saved, but I heard something in me tell me to leave because if I don't, I won't be saved. That's a whole nother story for a whole nother story time, right? And I left, 
and I was a GM, got my name on the door. I'm making $50,000 a year, young, in a year and a half, climbed the corporate ladder, got my name on the door. I'm making bank. You know what I'm saying? I ain't had no apartment at the time. I was still living with my mom. I ain't have to pay no mortgage or nothing. And I left. And I thought I was going to die, y'all. I ain't going to lie. Because I ain't never just been out here just waiting in the water with no job. I had, I had credit cards. My credit was A1. Was, was, well, it wasn't A1. It was like B minus. I should say that, right? It was like B2. Okay. <laughs> Because we got to tell the truth. Now, I'm not about to testify a lot of y'all. I got to tell y'all too. My credit was like a B2, which means maybe a B plus. It wasn't A1 at the time, right? And I'm building it. I'm saving it a little bit. I'm still shop more than a shopaholic. And I started being a fit lifestyle, a fitness business. You know, I, I did meal prep and all that. And the highest thought, and this is in 2019, because y'all can see it. That says 2019, uh, 2019. 2019 just just so y'all know how far back because i got saved at the end of 2019 right and really um i put uh, I, I wrote this check and i wrote that nina fit lifestyle was going to make fifty thousand dollars in 2019 i wrote it out to myself i wrote it to christina fifty thousand dollars zero cents and then i even put scarlet's avenue because the fifty thousand that nina fit lifestyle was going to make was going to fund another business and i wrote it and I stuck it on my desk where I was every day. And I looked at that thing every day. Every day that I wasn't getting no orders. Every day clients fell through. Every day my bank account went negative. Every day that I was scared they was going to come and repo my car. Every day that I had to get up and make meal plans and make things. And, 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 and um, not only was I meal, meal prepping and making workouts, but I also had to create content. And I had to keep putting my stuff online when I wasn't getting no hits. $50,000. And then... And then, oh, this is why I need a tripod because this thing just wrong and then look, right? And then, on top of that, after what happened with that is the pandemic hit. And everything shut down. And I'm crying. Crying. Because what am I going to do? I'm so far behind on bills. My, they're going to try and come and reap on my car. At this point, I'm not really realizing the whole world shut down. And everybody was at a standstill. And in that moment... In 2020 is when I realized when it was supposed to be 2020 vision and everything was going to become clear. The whole world gets shut down while I'm trying to catch up. And every time I'm trying to catch up, I feel like I'm pushing back. But I look at that check. I look at this check right here. And I'm, I'm so happy I still got it. Because this was the book I used to use to plan all of my stuff that I was going to do with Nina Fit Lifestyle. But I had the faith before I even knew who God was. And, and, and then when I finally knew what God was, I definitely started building my faith. Because in my first year of walking with God, my faith was weak. It wasn't even a mustard seed. It was weak. It was poor. I was tossed to and fro. But I wrote the check. And when I wrote the check in 2020, the world shut down. And I couldn't imagine how I was going to make $50,000 through Me and Fit Lifestyle. And I was believing God to move me. But everything shut down. I couldn't do Uber. Nobody was hiring. People was laid off. People was losing their jobs. And do you know in the middle of a pandemic, the Lord moved me? Do you know that in 2020, I made more than $50,000? $50,000 is what I made in one year annually as a GM with my name on the door. Should I, should I tell y'all how much I made in 2020? I hit about $80,000. Now, I'm not saying $80,000 sitting, but there were so many grants. There were so many resources coming into me. I hit about 80 and got to move in a nice, lovely apartment. Fully furnished. How? Faith. I exceed, what I wrote on that check was $50,000. It tells us that the Lord will do exceedingly and abundantly, far and above what you ever can think or imagine. Isaiah 55 also tells us his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. I didn't see how God could move me. Not when you're shutting down the world, not when there's a pan panorama. How am I going to move? How? Okay, okay. I don't want to get off topic. So when I tell y'all to write the check, I, I'm not telling you something I haven't done. I'm going to do it again. You expecting keys for a house? Get some keys. You expecting keys for a car? Get the keys for the car. You expecting key, a building? You expecting a, a, a warehouse? W what does the lettering look like? What does the color look like for, 
this factory. You're next. You're next. You need to say, I am next. And that is that. Here's the next point. Because I don't want to, I don't want to say right there. So again, no one never experienced rain. Just as if you never experienced to touch a million dollars to be a successful business owner or seen one in your family, you never seen or fully grasped your whole family being saved. All my family, you you might be like, all my family's been gangbangers, strippers, drug dealers, ain't none of them ever going to get saved. But if God says you are going to lead your family by the way you live your life for Christ into salvation, that your whole family going to be saved, then you better go look at Rahab and be like, mm, how, what's the rope I got to hang out the window, Lord? Who you, which one of your people you need me to help through? I know Rahab the whorling, the one that helped the spots. <laughs> and then she got, she's in the genealogy of Jesus. Oh, your whole family can be saved. You better believe it, right? You've never seen a healthy and ordained godly marriage. It will be you. Why will it be you? Because it tells us by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. God's word is framing already is the bones that's going to hold up the promise. It's your backing. It's your mercy. It's what's going to happen because the Lord said so. And if the Lord said so, let it be so. Good shout out. I'm going to shed that. Yeah. Y'all bugging. You bugging. Okay, let me read that in another translation for you because here it is. Let me read this in the, um, the AMP. Verse 3 says, faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's words. He spoke in the invisible realm, gave birth to all that is seen. God's word, word is planted in you and is growing you to capacity. You're expanding, you're groaning, you're being stretched because it's going to be birthed through you. Don't be mad at the birth pains. Just know that the birth pains means that the Lord is on. It, it, it's closer than ever before. You got to believe the word of God. Your faith is your title deed. Your faith is basically the same thing as this check. Your faith is this. That you can take to the bank of God every time you go and say, can I cash it now? Sometimes people, I don't know if you've ever been in there. Sometimes I used to work for this restaurant when I was just like a, a, a prep cook. And they would write us checks, right? And if sometimes, because it was a small business, and if they didn't have all the money in their, the, the actual amount of cash in their account for the checks that they've written for all their employees, they'll tell some employees, do not cash this. Like if I if I get it on Friday, they say, do not cash this until Tuesday. Sometimes you might just be taking this check to the bank of God and say, can I cash it now? And he'd be like, no, come back, not yet. But, but it's there. The check is yours. The money on the check is yours. It's written to you. It's yours. Why? Because your faith. You keep coming to this bank. Can I cash this? Can, I can cash this check now? They say, don't cash it until such and such date. It's going to clear on a certain date. And then sometimes the check is so big, and I'm not just talking monetary, whatever the promise is, the check, the promise is so big, it's pending. It's deposited. It looks available to you, but it just hasn't, like, you, you can't take it out yet. Does that make sense? I'll pray that makes sense. Let's go on to the next point because I, I don't want to keep y'all long. I'm already here. I'm, I'm almost past some time, Right? So, so we must not only look to God, this is not a point, but I just want to say it. So we must not only look to God for wisdom in the blueprint, sorry. So we must only look to God for wisdom in the blueprint of what he said will come to pass to know how to build on that word. So if you want to know how to build it, if no one never experienced rain and the Lord is telling him to build the ark, could you imagine Noah saying, Lord, what's an ark? What is that? And why am I building it? God's like, oh yeah, I'm about to flood the earth. Flood the earth with what? With rain. What's rain? Just build the ark. How do I build the ark? The Lord is telling you to do something, but how are you going to do it? The Lord is your blueprint. And every day, your faith needs to take you to the architect who by his word said it also is framing the, 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 your world. And when I say your world, your world, what does your world look like? I don't know, maybe it's a white picket fence, married, five kids, maybe not five, okay, three. The economy is kind of rough, but you know, we say, they don't love the Lord, I don't know. It says, our kids is like arrows in your quarter. I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, right? The business. 
business. It needs to have a blueprint after God. Your, your kid's going to college. How are you going to get that college fund? Some of you are, are wondering right now, you have uh, juniors and seniors back to back in college. I mean, in high school, and you're wondering how to get them to college because they, won't, they don't qualify for a scholarship. But I know I have faith that the Lord says that they're going to go. So you need to look to the blueprint. You need to go keep going to the bank of God with your faith. You need to keep turning to him because only he can He can help you. Noah did, wouldn't know how to build no ark if God didn't give him the, the, the semantics, if he didn't give him the measurements, if he didn't give him the layout. He had to tell him precisely how to build it, which he did if you go and read it in Genesis. Because how he was going to house all those animals? Where did he get this instruction from? He never experienced rain. He's in the desert. Before that time, the water came up from the earth. It never came down. But God said, I'm going to save you and your family. And here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Noah had to have help. His sons wasn't just sitting there. I know they probably thought he was crazy. He built this thing for 120 years. And you worry about that your check don't cash tomorrow? 120 years. So picture... How many people's like, oh my God, you you crazy. It still ain't rain. Noah, the rain is coming from the sky. Really? Really? What is this, an ark? How do you even spell that? People gonna ask you, how you gonna even do that? How you even gonna ship? How you gonna worry about worldwide shipping? How you how you how you gonna get in this place? Sorry. Oh, I hate that I'm hooked to somebody's Facebook right now. It's messing up my life. How how you how you gonna even get to somebody's uh uh how you even gonna get, get shipped to Africa? How you you ain't never even been to Africa? There's so many continents, there's so many countries in Africa. How you talk? We're in Africa. I don't know. I've never been here. Why are you worried about that? The words of God frames it. The word of God is your blueprint. So it says when we when we so we must only look to God for wisdom and the blueprint of what he said will come to pass to know how to build on that word. There, 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 when you go to the blueprint, there in your faith, we will find the understanding in our faith of moving on it. You will only gain comprehension when you move on the word of God. He's giving you A, D, H, K, He's not giving you everything in between, but he's telling you what the outcome is. Do you believe the outcome? Do you believe that God is not a man that he shall not lie, nor is he the son of man that he shall repent? Do you believe Isaiah 55, 11, that he said the word that go forth from my mouth, I shall not, shall not, shall not come back to me void? Do you believe that it says in Psalm 89 and 34 that his covenant that he will not break, nor shall he alter the words that come forth from his lips? He said, I said what I said when I said it and I meant it. If y'all want to claim English, right? So um, here's what the word understand means. I, I need to give, give y'all the word with the word understand. We're almost done. Just hang in here with me for a little bit. We're almost done. I'm almost done, right? It says through faith, verse 3, we understand that the worlds were framed. Through faith, we understand. To understand, it means to perceive with the mind. To understand, to have understanding. To understand means to think upon, to heed to ponder, to consider. So therefore, if even in Romans 4, um, when it says that Abraham didn't even consider his dead body because he was like 100 years old, and he didn't even consider Sarah's dead womb, what did he consider? He considered the word of God. He considered it in his mind. What happened if this really does happen? What happened when God blows my mind? You ponder, you heed, you hearken, you perceive in your mind. You see it before you see it. Do you understand? You got to gain comprehension here. Why? Because the enemy wages warfare on your mind. This is where doubt starts to take place because as a man think if he is, I'm thinking I'm a million dollars. I'm a wife. 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 And I have twins. I'm a wife. I'm a wife. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, I got a ranch. Ooh, I, I, I got a house. That's a, that's a, that's about a lake. I got a lake house. You know, I got a vacation house. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, I'm a successful person in ministry. I'm going to mentor women who's going to be powerful women, apostolic women who's, who, who's going to plant and they're going to uproot. They're going to they, they're gonna uproot, destroy, pull down, then build and plant. Oh my goodness! Oh yes, I can see a movement. I perceive in my mind. I, what do you perceive? I'm a, I'm more than, I'm a multi-millionaire that's gonna retire 
my mom. I one thing that I always say is that I am my family's 401k plan. That's how I feel. Because God is my 401k plan. I cash out with God. When everything else fell, God word won't fail. He fell if not. You gotta understand in your mind. Here's the point. What the Lord is requiring of you is immediate action now. Every day. I don't care if you got to read Hebrews 11, 1 to 3 in every translation. I'm telling you, what the Lord is requiring of us is immediate action now, every day. Do something towards the thing the Lord has spoken to you about. Do your research. Learn what kind of bank accounts. If we can put it in a CD right now. You know, they say saying bank money. Bank, banks are closing. Currency won't look good. Don't let that affect you. That has nothing to do with the promise that God has given you. The next point is, what we speak according to what we believe, what we have faith for, shall be performed. What we speak according to what we believe and have faith for shall be performed. There shall be a performance. God shall perform it. Perform it. Oh, God. Because it says by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are unseen, which so that the things that are seen were not made of the things that were seen. That means God spoke a thing and his word performed what he spoke. He spoke a thing and his words performed. He shall perform it. The next point is, what shall, I'm sorry, we shall see what we believe. I'm about to, we, we, we wrapping up in it. I got like a few more points. We shall see what we believe now in the conviction of our faith. You are going to see what you believe. Um, there was a scripture. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, with Jesus Hold on, I'm about, to pull, I'm about to pull it up. I'm about to pull it up. It says this right here, right here, right here. Matthew chapter 9, verses 29 to 31. This was a blind, these were blind men. And it was asking Jesus to heal them. They want to see. It says, Jesus touched their eyes and said, Become what you believe. Okay. We shall see, oh, they're by no shit. Oh, God, you better ask God to touch your eyes right now, to touch your mind and touch your eyes. Because they asked him to see, and he touched their eyes, and he said, oh, God. He said, he said, become what you believe. Here, the Lord is saying, we shall see what we believe now in the conviction of our faith. How much is your faith convicting you? How much faith you got that it got you moving? Well, I, I also want to read this because I want to read John chapter 1, 1 through 5, right? Because we shall see what we believe. And I said the, uh, um, uh, in, in the point before that, what we speak according to what we believe, have faith or shall be performed. Well, let's go to John chapter 1 real quick. John chapter 1, John chapter 1, John chapter 1. And I want to read this because we're going to cross-reference this. I'm going to read it in the New King James. And I'm going to read it in the message. We're going to cross-reference this real quick. And because let me tell you, what you speak is permissions. Oh, this is so good to me. I'm telling you. Tonight, I'm telling y'all to sow a now faith seed in the measure and the capacity of what you can. There's no number on it. But when I studied for this, the Lord already told me to tell y'all to sow a now faith seed. So a now faith seed, that's your business with the number. That's what you believe now that you can do now. But that doesn't mean you're going to always do. You are a tither now. You are big tither when things are tight now. You're not a tither when you got it all. That's not sowing anything in faith. And be a cheerful giver. Amen. Okay, John chapter 1 says this. It says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Who was he? The word, Jesus, right? All things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. 
In him, in who? In him, the word, Jesus, was life, and the light was the light of men. Oh, my goodness. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Hold on, hold on. I'm about to take us real quick. I, I want you all to keep up with me because I'm about to take us real quick, right? And so I also want to read that in the message version. Listen to this. Listen to what it says in the message. Um I got so many devices, but still at the same time, I don't have enough devices. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. But, you know, God be the glory. Here's what it says in the message version. The fundamental fact. Oh, no, no, that's not John. Sorry, sorry. John, let me go to John 1. John, here we go. John chapter 1. It says, the word was first, the word present to God, God present to the word, the word was God. In readiness for God from day one. The word of God was ready for God from day one. It says, everything was created through him. It keeps saying him. Who is him? The word. The word is Jesus. Nothing, not one thing came into being without him. What came into existence was a life, and the life was a light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness, and, put, and, and the darkness couldn't put it out. Okay. I don't think they get me here because right here, right here in Hebrews 11, 3, it says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. I just told you about the word of God in John 1, 1 through 5. By faith, we understand. So if you can't comprehend that in the beginning was the word <laughs> and the word was with God and the word was God. God's word is him. God, when he tells you something, is for his reputation. Do we, we like, I need us y'all to feel me here. It's his character. His word is his character. He said, my character is I don't fail. My character is nothing will stay null and void once I speak over it. Why, Nina? Oh, God. Oh, God. Nothing if his word in Isaiah 55 shall not come back to him void. And, and you want to check God's character. I mean, you want to check his resume. It says this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, and it was void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. First of all, Jesus says, when two or three who gather in my name, that he's in the midst of him. How? His spirit. Okay, so if you got faith, which faith is a gift of the spirit, that means the spirit of God is hovering there. Okay, okay, it says this. It says, and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Okay, let's go back to John. John 3 says, all things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In the beginning, then God said, verse 3 in Genesis 1, let there be light. He literally spoke the word, and then it tells us in John 1, in him was life, and the light was was the light of men. God's word is life. So when he told Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 37, and he took him and took him to a valley in the middle of dry bones, and he said, prophesy to these bones. And then the... God doesn't leave you without the words to prophesy. You got the word. You got the word. You got the word right here. God does not leave you null and void without the word to prophesy. Do y'all know that? He doesn't leave us. You got it. Here's your authority. Here's your authority. Where's the scripture? We, we, God backs up his word. So he took Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37 and set him in a place where everything was dead. Dead, dead. Like, the bones were so dead, they was bleached by the sun dead. And he said to Ezekiel, he asked Ezekiel, can these, can these, can these dead bones live? Ezekiel looked at the bones like, because mind you, Ezekiel said he walked him through the valley. So he saw all, everything dead. And then God said, Ezekiel, son of man, can these, can these dead bones live? Ezekiel looked down. He said, I don't know, God, but you know. Now, 
I don't think y'all feel me right here because I feel Holy Spirit right here. They like, can you have a baby? Can you even have a baby? I don't know, but God know, and according to God, He said I'm gonna have twins. Oh, do you even know how to make a million dollars? Do you even have that kind of work ethic? I don't know, but God knows because according to His word. Why is it according to God's word? Because then God said to Ezekiel. He, he didn't even, he didn't even say what I said. He said, prophesy to these bones. And then he told Ezekiel what to prophesy to the bones. And then the bones came apart and they stood there. But Ezekiel said, they're still lifeless. And the Lord says, but the very first thing the Lord told Ezekiel was to prophesy the breath of life to the bones. And Ezekiel prophesied, and everything came together. The sons upon sons, the human upon humans, the flesh upon flesh. Like everything came together, and the bones are standing there. The army's just up, standing there. And nothing was happening. And maybe that's what it's looking like for you. Things look like they come together, but it don't look like it's living. It looks like, it looks still day. I'm living my life right. My life is coming together. I'm getting better comprehension of my word, oh God. I'm walking right. I'm no longer drinking, smoking, sexing, fornicating, adultery. Whatever you're doing, no longer banging, slanging. But God said to Ezekiel, I guess I could go. I might as well go here. I don't really like paraphrasing, but I'm, I'm giving y'all like paraphrasing words because we read this so many times. Right? And that's the problem with the body of Christ. They're bones together, but they're dead. Verse 4 says, and again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, O dry bones, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sowings upon sowings on you, flesh upon, upon you, cover you with skin and, and, and put breath in you. So Ezekiel said, I prophesied to them, and the noise, you hear the thing coming, and it says suddenly a, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked at the sowing, flesh came upon them, and the skin was covered, uh, covered them, right? And then he said, and, and it says, and there was no breath in them. But God, this thing ain't living. I did what you told me to do. I've been fasting, I've been praying, I've been in consecration, I cut Ray Ray out, I cut Mimi out, she was whoring, Ray Ray just wanted to keep living in fornication, I cut all my game banging friends off, they hate me, I have no friends, I don't know what to do, my mama hate me, she think I'm doing too much, she think I'm a holy roller, I don't think I'm holy rolling, I just know that I'm set apart and you have called me for this. So then, when Ezekiel said, but ain't no word for them, it says, also he said to me, so God said, prophesy to the breath prophesy to the life of that thing cool you got the framework you got the blueprint <laughs> you, you 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 on zillow you got everything saved in your little tabby tabs you got the check sitting pasted on the desk you got it you got where you know where you want the building you know the school that you want your children to go to for college Prophesy the breath of life to it. He said, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath. Say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on the slain that they may live. And then Ezekiel says, so I prophesied as he commanded me. The Lord has commanded you, commanding you to prophesy to the thing that the, 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 the word that he has given you. That they, and, and he said, and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet in an exceedingly great army. Because God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly far and above than you can think. Because he asked Ezekiel what he thought. He said, son of man, can these dead bones live? Ezekiel said, if I tell the Lord what I think, I know he's going to do it. See, he's abundantly above what I could ever think anyway. I don't know, God. Can he live? You tell me. This is what you need to be speaking. This is what you need to be saying. Why? Okay. Okay. I'm hot, y'all. Because I'm excited. Because if you read verse 3 of Hebrews 11, and then you go back to John 1, 1 to 5, and then you bring in Genesis 1 and 3, it all connects. Because the, the, I didn't even get to the permissions. But, but, but here, 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 here's what it says in John. I'm going to read this precept. It says, real quick, it says, 
Verse 5 previews the victorious outcome of Christ's work on the cross. Verse 5, and the light shines in darkness. When the Lord said, let there be light, and he saw the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness in Genesis 1, 3, it says, he, he, the, the, verse 5 previews the victorious outcome of Christ's work on the cross, overpowering darkness. It says, um, darkness that is due to the absence of daylight. The forces of evil in the world. Anything that exalts itself against the word of God is evil. Anything that tries to get you to go out of line of the word of God is, a, is an evil force that's coming against you. It's darkness. Because the word of God is light. The word of God is not to put you in a dark, depressed place. If you're going to a dark, depressed place, that means there's something evil that's coming against you. It says this. It says, the forces of evil in the world with light, the truth. So light also means truth. So when God said, let there be light, he said, let there be truth. Oh, God. The truth, who is God himself. Who's the truth? God himself is the truth. This is why Jesus says, I'm the truth, the life, and the way. I'm the truth, the life, and the way. It says, John, both in his gospel and in his letters, brings into focus the mutual exclusivity of life and death and of light and darkness. Often light and darkness metaphorically express the truth, the goodness, and holiness of God. The truth and goodness and holiness of God. So when the Lord told Moses who, who he put into a cleft of a rock and you feel like you're in a rock between a hard place but God put you there, the Lord is saying, I'm going to allow all my goodness to pass before you. Oh, all my truth to pass before you. I'm going to cover you with my hand. That means his hand is on in your life. He's going to show you a capacity of his glory. In stark contrast to wickedness and rebellion. So darkness is wickedness and rebellion. I find this to be so good because it says in this time, in this time, listen to this, you will learn to speak permissions once you understand, you perceive in your mind the power of the word. The enemy is trying to get you to lose your faith so you can stop speaking the word, so you can stop prophesying to that thing, the breath of life. The enemy is trying to get you to stop speaking permissions, which God used in Genesis 1, that it tells us about in John 1 and 5, which tells us about in Hebrews 11, 3, how the worlds were framed. It says it was empowered if you read, oh, this I appreciate it. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. It tells us that it was empowered. Y'all, we got to stop playing with this word. We got to stop playing with this word. We got to stop playing with this word. Amen. We got to stop playing with this word. Let me go back to Hebrews. Um, Hebrews 11. And um, and I want to go in the, uh, la, 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 the Passion Translation. Because I need y'all to have some passion. Because y'all be watching Passion of the Christ and crying. But Jesus, that was the word of God on the cross, right? Right here it says, oh, not John, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews, Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay, yes. And 11. Right here it says, in verse 3, it says, faith empowers. So if you learn how to speak um, permissions by your faith that will empower the word that you're speaking. It says in this time you will learn to speak permissions once you understand the power of the word. It's life. It's light. So anything that seems dead, lifeless, and you need the light to come on in that place that is void and formless to take shape and become, then you need to go back to Hebrews 11 and 3. And grasp the understanding that by an act of faith, you got to move, woman of God. You got to move, man of God. By an act of faith. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's, it's, let me go to verse Hebrews. This is a Hebrews 11.4. It says in Hebrews 11.4, by an act of faith, Abel brought a better sacrifice to God than Cain. Abel believed his sacrifice was better. He knew that he believed this was the best of the best, right? Your faith needs to be the best of.
of the best. God tells us in um, James that if any of us lack wisdom to come and ask that he will give freely and without reproach. But it tells us we can't even come and ask for wisdom without faith. Because then you're just like a double-minded man. I don't know if God will give it to me. Oh, maybe he will. Oh, I, I think so. I know his word says it, but then what happened if he won't do it for me? He says who? If he said it, he's going to do it. It tells us by faith, we see the world called into existence by God's word. So you need to learn to speak permissions because by faith, we see the world called into existence. That's literally Genesis 1. Let there be light. Right? Then God says, let there be a firmament. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together. God is speaking permissions in Genesis 1. He's given his word to permissions to bring forth the immaterial thing that was not seen, the immaterial word that was not seen to create the things that are seen. He's speaking permissions. Here's my last point to y'all. I hope this is blessed y'all because there's going to be a now faith part two. And, and we're going to get deeper into this, but I had to give y'all this. A revelation the Lord gave me the other day while I was uh, in prayer, not even concerning this word, but he gave it to me. The Lord says we are going to develop, let me just read it how it says. It says echo chambers are being established. The Lord says echo chambers are being established. Echo chambers will be communities and people you surround yourself with. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, according to Romans 10 and 17. The other day I was in prayer about hearkening to the word of God. And I went into a vision. And this is what, and this ain't even a normal speedboat Bible study. I think this Bible study got way too deep. Right? Well, not deep enough because we could get deeper, right? Um, and and, and, and I, was in, I was in prayer and I was praying. Right. And I started praying 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, where it says, I will cast down every vain imagination that exalts itself. I, I will cast down every vain imagination that exalts itself against the word of God, against the word the Lord gives me. And I kept saying it. And then I heard Holy Spirit say, go look it up. And I read it. And it says, uh, at, at, no, at that moment, I went into a vision and um. I heard Holy Spirit said, this is the echo chamber. As soon as I prayed, I'm casting down every vain imagination that exalts itself against God. And I knew the scripture, but I wasn't saying it verbatim. And I went into a vision and I was in this vision and I'm going to explain the vision. I said, in the vision, it's like an ecosystem. I said, it will be installed in our ecosystem. I said, it's an ecosystem, it, uh, an ecosystem in our ecosystem, our echo chamber, because there is wisdom in the echo, the Lord is saying, right? So then he told me to go look up 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. And 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If you have the knowledge of God, you have the fear of God, you have the respect of God, you have the revere of the word of God. If you have the word of God, you need to have the revere in the word of God. Why? Because you know you have the ability of God. That's why God said if any of you lack wisdom to come to him, God's wisdom is his might. It says, I'm um, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, to the obedience of the word that was in the beginning with God and that everything that we see, see, it was created from what wasn't seen, meaning with the faith of the word of God, because God is faithful. Faith is a fruit of the spirit. So um, while I was praying this, here's the vision. I said, um, I said, the Lord is the Lord said He is creating echo chambers for an Isaiah 55 11 time, meaning so that His word can come to pass and it shall not come back to Him void. He is putting us in an echo chamber in our ecosystem. I said um, to see the heavens open, to see the angels ascending and descending. I said I saw in the vision as I prayed like a chamber with a dome over it. It could have been a digital or electric dome because it made the room like it was glowing like blue. And um, it was like this glowing, uh, uh, like blue, like this royal blue. And many in there just moving back and forth in prayer. Then ladders coming down out of the sky, out of the ceiling, and just the words of faith and prayer moving through the atmosphere like flashes of light because the angels are carrying the prayer requests. 
Only those of the same faith will be allowed in. We was fortified. This dome was like a, a, a electrical covering or something. And that the, as I prayed 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing, anything that tried to get through that dome was shot down. It couldn't get through the digital covering. Y'all have to understand. So when the Lord says in this time that he is creating, he is, that echo chambers are being established, communities and people you surround yourself. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. In this time of now faith, when you need to take action, you need not to be around anybody who does not have the belief. Jesus even kicked people out of the room just to bring uh, 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 the, the, the daughter back to life. Elijah had the mother outside the room when the mother came to him and said, son of man, a son of a man of God, did I ask you for a son? He had the mother wait outside the room and he breathed on that boy. How many times have you seen that Jesus says this person can't? can't come when he even went to transfigure on the mount all of them in his inner circle couldn't come only the inner inner circle you need to be careful who you around right now right now because the lord is creating an echo chamber and what the echo is doing the echo chamber involved is a protection to keep you for only hearing the words of faith it's only getting you to listen to what god is telling you period you will hear nothing else it cast down that digital, I don't even know what to call it. It was like a dome, but I can tell it was digital because every time something came in, it's like it bounced off and fell down. It, it cast it down and took it captive. Only words of faith can get in there. And everybody's in there praying the things of faith. They're meditating on the word of God. They're meditating according to the word of God. And I want to encourage you right now that you need to create echo chambers in your ecosystem. Your ecosystem is where you are. When you give a car to make it eco, that means it's good for the environment. You need to change your environment. You need to make sure that your environment is breathing life, speaking life. And the way you do this is let. My permission is when I speak, let there be clarity. Oh, Father, I, I, I start speaking over my bank accounts like this. Oh, God, I'll ask that I'll let there be every negative bank account turned into a positive. I need it not just in the black. I need, it, need to let it be in abundance. I ask right now, oh, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, to let ships that don't sink resource house be a resource to the nations. Start speaking permissions. Start speaking permissions and then you only get people around you who also speak permissions because you need this in now faith. God said, let there be light. And then John 1, tell, 1, and, uh, 1 to 5 tells us how the word was with God in the beginning and how the word was the light and it was the light of men. It's the knowledge of who God is. That light is knowledge. You need to have the knowledge of the ability of God. This is why you got to testify because then Hebrews 11, 3 tells us, and we know by faith, the worlds were framed by the word of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Oh God, I admonish your people right now and exhort them to be always in their word, meditating on their words, getting their environment together and put them in a, a, a echo chamber. Oh God, let echo chambers hop up and around your people. Oh Father God, let echo chambers surround your people who believe this word. Oh Father God, to the measure of faith that they believe. Oh Father God, let their echo chamber increase. Oh God, let you send others into their life that is speaking the same faith language in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you right now. Oh Father God, as we close out this Bible study, study, oh God, of this now faith, oh Father God, that they will take action. They will get back into action. And when you ask them, can these dead bones live? They will look to you and say, God, I don't know, but you know. And if you say so, let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be abundance. Let the, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in the earth through my life as it is already in heaven. Come on, y'all. So I'm going to tell you again, sow a seed of now faith seed. Sow a seed of faith to the measure of which you believe. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that many will go and let them subscribe to ships that don't sink. Oh, Father God, YouTube, so they can take this word that was taught on tonight and sow it into somebody else's uh, life. Oh, Father God, I pray that this word lands on good ground. Oh, Father God, I pray that every part of their heart, any place that was hardened. Oh, Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, all the Father 
fallow ground is broken up and the seed is taken place and is planted in their hearts, oh Father God. I pray that this will stir them to action. I pray this will get them to move, oh Father God. I pray that they will have understanding, that they will see it in their mind, they will perceive in their mind before they see it with their eyes, oh Father God. I pray that their faith, which is the immaterial mechanism, oh Father God, will produce the material uh, blessings and provisions that you have already spoke to them, oh God. Let them get on their face tonight and repent for any doubt that they allow to exalt itself up against your word, oh Father God. Let them go and repent for any doubt, any worry that they did not take captive, oh Father God, according to your word. Oh God, according to your word in 2 Corinthians 10 and, uh, 10 and 5, let them start building, oh Father God. Let their echo chambers, oh Father God, in their ecosystems be established. Let them partner with their faith partners in the name of Jesus. Let them find the community. Let them find the people. Let them find, oh Father God, um, those in their region, in their neighborhood, oh Father God, that can see what you have already spoken, oh God. Let them have an understanding. Let this mind be in them that was also in Christ Jesus, oh God. I speak permissions over them, oh God. I speak right now, oh God, that they will have an over a uh, uh, flow of abundance of the uh, of your miracle signs and wonders in in their life, oh Father God. The dudamus behind the 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 dudamus behind the word of God, the power, oh God, that you shall bring that thing to pass. That there shall be a performance. They shall see what they believe. They shall become what they believe. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. This replay will only be on ships that don't sink YouTube. I'm not saving it anywhere else. Thank you for joining me on Instagram. Thank you for joining me on TikTok. I am going to tell you to sow a faith seed. I don't care if you sow into your own ministry. Well, not your own personal ministry or somebody else's ministry. But I'm telling you to let the seed go. Sow it in at ships that don't sink. I'm at our cash app. I appreciate y'all being here for me or with us tonight. I will encourage you to watch this replay. I need you to get stirred. The enemy did not want me to have this word today. He fought me in my feelings because we know when we get in our feelings, we get stagnant and now we feel all whatever, whatever. But I had to put my face to the ground today and I had to pray and remind the have the Holy Spirit remind me who I am and what he has said and the ability of who I am and what kind of power I have inherited just by being in covenant. I had to hold tight my title deed and I'm going to tell you that. That's why I have on this trust in God shirt and technically this trust in God shirt, I want to know if it works. Oh, it don't glow. It usually glows in the dark, right? So you put it up to the light and it glows in the dark. This is your, your trust. This is trusted confidence in the Lord. Trusted confidence in the Lord. Trust in his word. The Lord God word is solid. It's a firm foundation. Stagger not. Have full confidence. Be, be fully persuaded. And if you feel like you are not in a place of faith, then guess what? That's why you need an echo chamber in your ecosystem. You need to be around a community and people. We will be having our ships that don't sink resource house Bible study. The resource house open on August 30th. The Bible study starts only for our resource house member. It will only be on Zoom on September 6th. So I would encourage you to follow us on IG, TikTok, and YouTube so you can know when that enrollment happens. So you can come in. We the ships that don't sink resource house is an echo chamber. Okay, God, let the ships that don't sink resource house always be a resource of an echo chamber until many or others are able to go out and build in their communities an echo chamber. We are an echo chamber. We are the kind of ecosystem you want to be in, okay? We will continue to encourage you in the Lord, encourage you in the word. I love y'all with the love of Christ. I thank y'all for joining me here. And um, I guess uh, I'll see y'all later. Um, I don't have nothing else. Again, you can sow a faith seed at Ships That Don't Sink. Um, just how it is, Ships That Don't Sink, to our cash app. We appreciate y'all. And y'all, go in faith and go in love. Go in faith. Go read your word. That's what I'm saying. Go read that word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And I think you need to hear some more word of God. Bye, y'all. Okay, y'all on Zoom, is there any questions?